I got a ride from Matthew Bellocchio to 192 Broadway Street. Running through the city of Methuen, Massachusetts, is the beautiful Spicket River. This spot is scenic enough to attract the average passerby. Located on the banks of this river, however, is a musical treasure unknown to many. I just arrived at the Methuen Memorial Music Hall. Take a look. From the outside, the relative simplicity of this turn-of-the-century red brick structure belies the grandeur of its interior. The music hall was formerly known as the Serlo Organ Hall. It took 10 years to build and was completed in 1909 to house the Volker Opus 200 pipe organ. The exterior architecture is primarily an Anglo-Dutch style. On the north side of the property is a red brick storage shed. This is where the Volker pipe organ was stored while Serlo Organ Hall was being constructed. The dirt lot on the south of the building was once the location of the Methuen Organ Factory. The organ builder James Treat was located here. Ernest M. Skinner later operated the factory from 1936 to 1942. The building was eventually abandoned and burned down in June of 1943. Matthews one of the trustees of the Methuen Memorial Music Hall. He also works for the Andover Organ Company, which has participated over the years in the care and upkeep of the organ in the hall. Another friend of mine from Andover had recommended that a good view of the organ was from the balcony. I headed up the stairs while Matthew turned on the lights in the hall. The magnificent case of this organ was the inspiration for another instrument I grew up hearing and seeing. Joseph Ridges had used it as a template when designing the tabernacle organ at Temple Square in Salt Lake City. The majestic design of the case parallels the absolutely ornate interior of the music hall itself. It's no wonder that it took 10 years to complete this magnificent structure. The walls and ceiling draw one's eyes upward towards the staggering detail of carved designs, sculpted figures, windows, and busts of famous composers. American architect and illustrator Hammett Billings designed the organ case. His design was realized by the master craftsmanship of the Herder brothers, Gustav and Christian of New York City. One could spend literally hours exploring the nuances of depth and detail in the case. The intricate woodworking is indicative of the Herder brothers' unparalleled craftsmanship that went into all of their creations. How fortunate indeed that this case should house the very first concert organ in the United States. Up front behind the newer console on the stage and adjoining the organ case is the original four manual tracker action console. The draw knob stops are encased behind glass and everything is very much in place as it was since its creation. 
Although weathered and worn by time and use, the privilege of being so close to an original historic console was thrilling. The newer, movable 1947 Aeolian Skinner console sits out in front on the stage. It has a number of adjustable combination pistons, both general and divisional, as well as a plethora of divisional couplers and supercouplers. The pedal board is flat. The swell and choir both have expression pedals. There's a crescendo pedal, as well as a toe stud, which engages full organ. There are 85 stops, controlling 5 divisions, 116 ranks, and a total of 6,088 pipes. You can see the manufacturer plate from Aeolian Skinner, as well as an opus plate with G. Donald Harrison's signature on it. The story of the great organ begins in 1852 with the completion of the Boston Music Hall. The Music Hall Association wanted a world-class organ for their new hall. They commissioned Jabez Upham, a local physician and president of the association, with the task of contracting a reputable organ builder. In 1857, Dr. Upham set sail for Europe. His searching eventually led him to Ludwigsburg, Germany. There he met with E.F. Volker, who had inherited the orgel bow from his father. Dr. Upham soon signed a contract for the construction of a new organ. Work on the great organ took several years, due to a number of unforeseen delays in building and shipping, including the onset of the American Civil War. The organ eventually made it to Boston in 1863. This would be Volker's Opus 200. As mentioned before, the Herder brothers created the ornate case for the instrument. The great organ enjoyed more than two decades of performance in the Boston Music Hall. In the early 1880s, however, the formation and growing fame of the Boston Symphony Orchestra led to the need for greater space on the stage. By 1884, in spite of the many efforts of organ enthusiasts to intervene, the organ was removed from the hall. It was purchased by William Grover of the Grover & Baker Sewing Machine Company. He had intended to donate it to the New England Conservatory of Music, but he died in 1895 before realizing that dream. In 1897, the organ was sold to millionaire Edward Searles, who interestingly enough had worked with the Herder brothers when he was younger. The Searle Organ Hall was constructed over a 10-year period and was designed and built by Henry Vaughn. In 1909, upon completion, an informal inaugural recital was performed by Everett Truitt. As a privately owned venue, the hall became Edward's own large, expensive personal organ hall. In today's terms, it was truly a majestic man cave of sorts. A few years after Edward Searle's death, the organ was purchased by Ernest M. Skinner, who would later establish the E.M. Skinner Organ Company. By 1946, Methuen Memorial Music Hall, Incorporated was established. They contracted G. Donald Harrison of the Aeolian Skinner Organ Company to renovate the organ. The changes were significant enough that he assigned the organ an opus number as Aeolian Skinner Opus 1103. In 1970, the Andover Organ Company restored a full chorus of reeds to the Great Division to bring it back to somewhat of the disposition it was before the 1946 renovation. After a long and rich history of more than 160 years, the Great Organ has become the masterpiece we now enjoy. Today, the legacy of the Great Organ lives on. Two days before my personal tour, I had the absolute pleasure of attending one of the Wednesday evening organ recitals. Okay. Thank you. All right, that's good. Thank you. Thanks, guys. How are you? Thank you. Hello. How are you? Thank you very much. In addition to its numerous musical concerts, the hall is also available to rent for weddings and other special events. Books, CDs, and other memorabilia are also available for purchase. Performance season runs from May to December each year, including a wide variety of concerts and other events. This evening's performer was the organist from Andover Academy. Join me in uh, welcoming her. From May to August is the Wednesday evening recital series, featuring organists from all over the globe over the course of 15 weeks. The Music Hall website has lists of the many organists who have performed in the hall over the past century. The Methuen Memorial Music Hall is a private nonprofit organization established to preserve the great organ. It also hosts the Methuen Young People's Theater each summer. For more than four decades, it has awarded scholarships to high school seniors who plan to pursue music degrees in college. 
The music hall is maintained by a board of trustees filled with men and women who dedicate hours of time and effort toward one ultimate goal, to preserve the legacy of the Methuen Great Organ. As if it wasn't amazing enough that I should get a chance to play on this instrument, Matthew wanted to give me my own personal tour inside the organ. We're inside the great organ. This is one of two levels of reservoirs, double rise reservoirs. Over here, this is the old electro-pneumatic combination action that Aeolian and Skinner put in. It's been superseded by a solid-state combination action, but it's been kept here for historical purposes. This is the 16-foot bassoon in the pedal, which is one of three sets of three reeds in the organ. Here's the free reed. It's not a beating reed, but it's a free reed. And it's tuned by screwing the rod in or out with this gigantic uh, tuning tool. In this corner are the boots of the 32-foot Contra Bombard, which is also free reed. Up we go. This is the choir division. And you see the, the three reeds immediately to the left. There's the Z foot uh, clarinet, the four foot regal, which is wood and it's another free reed. And then the 16 foot. There's also, if you look at the wooden pipes, the first wooden set, the treble is actually cylindrical. That's a harmonic flute. And again, behind you is this, this is the 32 foot reed. And then low C is the one in the corner. Now for the best parts. No, uh... <laughs> We're standing on top of the choir box that we just peeked into. Uh, just below us are the two Winchests of the Great Division, to the right and to the left. And to the extreme left, which is at the back of the organ, is the swell division in which shades. And then immediately beyond the two great chests at 90 degrees is the positive chest. And then behind it and to the left of it are pedal chests and stops. Every part of this organ is reachable. No expense was paid. To tune the case pipes, this is going to be a as I walk up, but it's perfectly safe. This is how we tune the lowest notes in the facade. <laughs> and the towers are attached. This is the pedal uh, 
two and two thirds, two foot and mixture, which were added by Aeolian Skinner. Well, the pedal upper work chest, that chest was added by Aeolian Skinner. The largest pipe in the tower is low F of the 32 foot principle in the pedal. So this is the C sharp side. So low C sharp is a wooden pipe in the tower and D is this wooden pipe standing there. And if you look to the other side, the C side, Low C is inside the tower, wooden pipe, and then D and E are inside against the wall. So F is the largest tin pipe in the side, 32 foot F. So we have a, dub a double rise reservoir and another double rise reservoir, and they are ganged together with iron bars. So they work in tandem, so it's double rise, double bar. Double, double rise, double ganger. This was the original stock list. And here we have the, uh, the, the pedal two foot Rochalmai. Rochalmai is one Aeolian Skinner specialty. And then the trumpet shaped resonators, that's the four foot clarion in the pedal. Those resonators are from the original Volker organ. All of the Volker trumpets were shaped like that with, uh, with bells on them. Here we are on the swell division. The reeds are date from Aeolian Skinner. Aeolian Skinner did a lot of changes. So this is the, the oboe, the four foot clarion, the eight foot trumpet, and then at the far end of the chest, the 16 foot uh, bassoon or fregato. Follow me. Here we are in the middle of the grate. So we have some of the mixtures. There's a five rank mixture here, four rank mixture here. There's the reeds. This is the four foot clarion, the eight foot trumpet, and then on the other side is the 16 foot trumpet. When Donald Harrison rebuilt the organ, he removed reeds from the grate. He liked a reedless grate with a septiem. In the 1970s, Andover restored reeds to the grate. You can see out. <laughs> and the center pipes are dummies, and that's the back of box head. How fitting indeed to end the tour of such an amazing instrument next to the image of one of its greatest composers. Walking through the great organ impressed upon me once again the staggering scope of such an instrument, something of monumental scale composed of such intricate detail. It truly was an experience of a lifetime. From my first demonstration piece, I chose something soft and lyrical. Next, I chose a piece to demonstrate the organ's crescendo capabilities.
And finally, I thought I'd finish by pulling out all the stops. That was an amazing instrument. So, until I see you next time, have fun at the console. Bye.